Hello everyone. Very good morning to all of you. So before I start of my presentation, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mohit Sharma. I am a researcher in reactor engine department, SF Stephen Institute, Slovenia. So welcome to my video lecture, which is entitled as review of Thelema activity. So in simple word, you can say Thelema experiment. So here we will discuss what are the experiments which has been conducted and which has been designed in our lab, which can be explained one by one. So here you can see a beautiful picture of our lab. Here, this is the test section, which is under laser light and CID. Now question is, what is Thelema? Thelema is Thermal Hydraulic Experimental Laboratory for Multi-Phase Flow Application. So this lab is not only limited for a single phase flow, but it can be extended to multi-phase flow application. So in this lab, we will discuss four experiments. First is calorimetry experiment. Second is Taylor bubble experiment. Third is backward facing step, that is GFS experiment. And fourth is heating foil duct experiment. So in calorimetry experiment, you see there is a two fluid. One is red one, that is water, that is hotter. And other is blue one, that is cooler, which we can call it refrigerant. So here, the hotter fluid is getting uh, his heat and it's transferred to the refrigerant. So in this experiment, we will discuss the power transfer from one fluid to the other and also the losses to the surrounding. Also, this experiment facilitates both co-current and counter-current facility. Then second is Taylor bubble experiment. So in this experiment, we will discuss how the bubble shape disintegrates with respect to time. So in this experiment, we will discuss about different diameter, how this different diameter will affect this bubble shape. And also we will discuss how it disintegrates with the time. Third is backward facing step, that is BFS experiment. In BFS experiment, we will mainly investigate the velocity profile in a rectangular duct having expansion ratio more than two. Then we will discuss about the heating foil duct ex experiment. In this experiment, we will discuss the how uh, temperature fluctuation. So here you can see this is all the temperature fluctuation or we can say thermal fluctuation on the surface of solid. So how it is important for the system design and safety. state of the art in instrumentation. So we have a very advanced measurement instrumentation. So our Thelma lab is equipped with the following instrumentation that is CIV with high speed camera and laser. We have a Corolysis flow meter. We have a K, K, K170 water triple point reference. We have a LODA 845 feet thermal bath. We have a national instrumentation PXI acquisition system with LABD software. We have other CFD software and course also, and we have a fast IR camera, which is coming soon. So uh, PIV is mainly meant for investigating velocity profile inside a tube or duct. So it is equipped with high speed ca uh, camera, which has a uh, dimension of 1280 into 800 pixel and 12 kilohertz, and uh, having a double cavity laser, which has a dimension of 0.27 nanometer. So we have a Corolysis flow meter also, which is uh, known for its accurate measurement in wide ranges of flow rate. So unlike some other flow meter, it has an advantage that it is it has no significant effect uh, when our density or viscosity viscosity changes. So it is mainly uh, meant for uh, uh, accurate measurement in you know, a wide ranges of flow rate, say uh, from 1 kg per hour to 2000 kg per hour. Then we have a uh, water triple point reference for accurate temperature measurement. It is mainly meant for uh, uh, calibrating temperature efficient equipment. Then we have a 
thermal bath uh, for maintaining constant temperature so it is like a uh, water a heated water in a container and uh, from this uh, thermal bath it can maintain a long it can maintain a temp constant temperature for a long period of time then we have a acquisition system with Lebu software uh, it can it have a uh, 2 into 32 32 into 32 thermocouples and 10 analog channels so here in Lebu in acquisition system it is meant for mainly converting our digital analog signal into digital signal so that computer can interpret uh, the signal so from this uh, soft, uh, software we can uh, measure temperature and pressure in a real time so we can see in a real time that what is the temperature and process, uh, pressure during the uh, experiment or in process then we have a CFD core software and course so in addition to above we have a commercial CFD software like N6, CSX, Fluent and we have open source code also like open form set, code Saturn, Neptune, CFD, ESI, Boil and NEC 5000 and uh, we also purchased a fast IR camera which is coming soon so IR camera is mainly meant for measuring the temperature on the surface of solid so it is also known for its uh, high accuracy temperature measurement now calorimetry experiment so as i explained uh, in the initial slide that what is the color experiment is about for now we will discuss in detail so as i explained that uh, there is a two fluid one fluid which is giving his heat uh, or we can say rejecting heat sheet and other is getting heat sheet so the, the fluid which is rejecting heat is we can call as a secondary fluid and that is heating water and one which is getting the heat then we can call as a primary full fluid and that is a refrigerant so here you can see the structure that uh, in the center part it is somewhat like saw hooted type so water is flowing from inside here and it goes into the saw heated to type structure so this saw heated to type structure facilitates the heat more heat transfer as you know that uh, it, it is a uh, smooth surface uh, and if the uh, surface is like saw heated or sealed then it increases the heat transfer so it is meant for increasing the heat transfer so this heat is transferring to the refrigerant which is in which is uh, in the annular part of the and outside outside the uh, annular part there is a glass tube so this is the basic uh, structure so uh, here uh, there is a passage for 48 thermocouples so out of 48 thermocouples the 24 thermocouples are submerged in the water and 24 thermocouples are on the surface of solid which is 15 mm apart along the length of the test section uh, but for refrigerant there is only at the inlet of the thermocouple at the inlet of the refrigerant flow and at the outlet inside uh, in uh, along the axial direction there is no uh, uh, thermocouple for measuring the temperature of refrigerant why the reason is that this thermocouple is also offsetting the flow so author uh, has put uh, or experimentalist has put only uh, at the inlet and the outlet so now the question is how to measure uh, uh, the uh, refrigerant temperature along the axial direction so author has proposed this equation so from this equation we can calculate the uh, refrigerant flow along the test section so here you can see that there is a P1R minus P inlet so now uh, with NCP delta T and uh, NCP sorry and then uh, equal to P1 which is heat flux transferred from water to refrigerant and it can be calculated by NCP delta T then K1 is the loss, co loss coefficient or coefficient of conduction loss is watt per, watt per Kelvin and then P inlet resident minus PA. So author has divided this test section into three parts. 
first is left head other is middle part and third is right head so this one two and three represent uh, one is represent for left hand the two is represent for the middle part and three represent for the right part so from this three way model we can calculate the refrigerant temperature along the test section now the author has uh, put uh, two cases but in first cases only water is uh, flowing uh, and in second case only refrigerant is flowing so uh, for first case when water is only uh, flowing so here you can see for the entire test section this is the heat loss which is linearly uh, varies with the C average minus C pair C average is nothing but uh, average of inlet and outlet temperature so uh, here you can see uh, that uh, uh, when refrigerant flow this is shown by this red line so uh, and this k is uh, for the theoretical uh, case uh, which is 5 megawatt per meter square so uh, in uh, in this two case, if we compare these two cases with the uh, theoretical one then it is overestimating the uh, then it is uh, the higher losses is higher in case of resident flow as compared to the water flow but it is the limiting case where the water is stationary or where the refrigerant is stationary but in uh, actual case it is not like that uh, in actual there is also uh, water is also flowing and refrigerant is also flowing so with the similar type of coefficient if we use and if we try, uh, authors try to decouple uh, this coefficient then uh, author has found that uh, this measured heat losses are higher as compared to the model heat losses so author proposes that more complex model is needed for evaluating this type of phenomena So now Taylor bubble experiment. So as we know that uh, two phase flow regimes varies from bubbly flow, then slug flow, and then annular flow. So in slug flow, uh, there is a large gas intermittent structure which is commonly referred as a Taylor bubble. So now what is the Taylor bubble? A Taylor bubble is a bullet shaped bubble which flows in the pipe and occupies almost entire cross section of the pipe. So this is very large. Uh, bubble, but uh, this bubble is disintegrate with the uh, with respect to time also. So this disintegration rate mainly depends on the small bubble generation. You can see in the wake of the large bubble here. So uh, why this experiment is needed? So this experiment is needed because uh, this small bubble generation. Uh, uh, is uh, very quite is a quite challenging task in the numeric simulation. Hence, author has uh, planned an experiment to investigate this phenomena. So, for this, you can see here this is the facilities of uh, Taylor bubble experiment. Uh, here, from water from the tank, it is water is at constant temperature. It flows through the pump. Then there is a regulating valve that is called bypass valve for regulating the flow then it will go to the correlative flow meter where it, it is it can be measured after this measured flow rate it will go to the test hole and then to the test section so after this test section it will uh, go to the uh, three different isolation valves so this isolation valve is used to, to separate one from the other so this test section has a height of 1.5 meter and author has used three diameter pipe one is small middle and large so small pipe having the inner diameter of 12.4 mm for middle part it is 26 mm and for large wheel it is 43.4 mm then this water flow again goes to the uh, tank so what author has find out uh, from this experiment so from this three uh, diameter that is small middle and large one so in small pipe the shape of Taylor bubble is stable then not many bubbles are observed in the downstream 
you can see there is no uh, bubble in the wake of large bubble but in the middle pipe the tail bubble shape is less stable and more bubbles are generated in the wake downstream if in both the cases we were able to follow the isolation of same tail bubble for more than two hours so it will last for two hours but not in case of large bubble so in large pipe uh, tail bubble turned out to be very unstable and it sleep it is a long last only for one minute because the counter current flow which stabilizes the uh, buoyancy of bubble is not enough uh, to hold this bubble and bubble is slipped away from the test section so uh, from this experiment author has concluded first is that for a uh, longer bubble length uh, the disintegrate friction rate is uh, constant but for the shorter bubble length it depends on the bubble shape and also author also suggested the modification for the large bubble so in future she will uh, have a sufficient flow so that it can balance the buoyancy of air bubble for larger bubble Now BFS experiment, that is backward second step experiment. So in this paper, author has investigated the velocity profile uh, for experimentally, and uh, she has compared uh, this experimental profile with the numerical simulation. So here, author used the uh, uh, duct uh, for for inlet. It is a rectangular one, and after a certain length, it is expanded and has a square duct you can see here the height of the rectangular duct at the inlet is 20 mm and the width is 45 mm after 60 cm then it again uh, attains a height of 45 mm in height and 45 mm in width the total length of the section is 120 cm so this is you see this is the real picture of Test facility where test section, laser, tank, and high speed transmission is there. So, what are the main points? So, first is liquid velocity field in the flow over the backstretching step per measure with VIP technique. Then, second is stream wise velocity field shows a good agreement of the measurement with the simulation. The shape of velocity field is similar. So, you see here the shape of uh, experimental uh, uh, velocity profile measured with the PIV is matching with the numerical simulation. The small vortex in the bottom corner, say if x equal to 0 and y equal to minus 2, just after the step is visible in all cells. So you see here at x equal to 0 and y equal to minus 2, this wake is there. You can see here. It is similar in all the cases. For the large vortex, which can be extended up to dimensionless length of x, say x equal to 50, uh, is visible in all fields. So here you also see that after sim, uh, uh, x equal to 50, then this is similar in the all the cases. Now HFD experiment that is heating foil duct experiment. So here uh, the main points of this HFD is conjugate heat transfer both in single and two phase is widely encountered in our day to day life for having importance in industrial application like nuclear, thermal and other industrial application. So in several component of nuclear power plant or processing plant or any transport system engine, it is not enough to identify only a average for wall to fuel heat transfer rate. In certain cases, other phenomena is also important, like the temperature oscillation, is also one of the phenomena which is in the fluid adjacent to the wall and inside fluid adjacent to the wall and inside the wall, which gives rise to thermal fatigue of material and failure of the compound. So it means this temperature oscillation is important in the design of system and safety of the system. So problem of this type are known as conjugate heat transfer. They address the temperature field in the liquid and wall simultaneously. So the last point is that this permit to study the penetration of temperature fluctuation from the liquid into the 
the wall and in the opposite direction. So for this phenomena, so author has performed the DNA simulation and he found that there is a temperature oscillation on the surface of the solid, which is very thin surface. So like water having a imprint, having a temperature imprint on the surface of solid and he has investigated this. But for this uh, temperature fluctuation, there are very few experiments and for particular this type of uh, uh, numerical simulation, there is no experiment. So uh, there is a need for the experiment for to investigate this thermal oscillation or thermal fluctuation phenomenon. In previous slide, I have discussed about there is a need for heating foil duct experiment. Now in this slide, I will discuss what is the strategy for heating foil duct experiment. So first step is design of experiment. Then second is fabrication of test section, which includes his engineering drawing and also the drawing of test facility. Then the third is experimental mix, which includes the flow rate and heating power, power required for this uh, experiment. Then uh, fourth is measurement, which includes flow measurement, washer measurement, uh, flow meter is required for pressure drop measurement, DPT is required for temperature measurement, uh, IR camera and thermocouple is required. Uh, we need also other equipment like pumps, DC power supply or rectifier which convert DC to DC and also the heat exchanger. Then we need to perform the experiment and after performing the experiment, we need to analysis of it. So this is all about the history for experiment. So out of this, uh, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, uh, we have completed this five part. So for design of experiment, uh, we uh, we have a literature survey for the thing. Then for fabrication test. Fabrication of the test section, we have prepared the engine drawing of the test section, and uh, now it is in the process for fabrication. So, for experimental matrix, uh, we have uh, prepared an experimental matrix for the uh, heating fault experiment. For me measurement, we have a flow meter also, we have DPT also. For temperature measurement, we have thermocouple also, but uh, this, uh, we have purchased the IR camera and it is coming soon. Uh, we have uh, other equipment also like pump and uh, this uh, DC power supply or uh, power supply for heat exchange. So it is all about. The design of new test section and experimental facility is divided into two parts. First is review of existing design of the test section in experimental facility. Means first we need to review the existing literature for the same. And then we need to propose a new design of the test section and experimental facility for our experiment. So I have found uh, the heating foil duct uh, experiment in the existing literature, uh, which is authored by Moses and all. And it's published in 2003. So here is uh, this is the geometry of the test section. So here you see the width is 0.2 meter and depth is 0.02 meter. So it is a rectangular shaped duct. Uh, then uh, here you see the depth is 0.02 meter and in the span wise it is 0.2 meter. And then uh, the screen wise length is 7.2 meter which includes uh, will be calculated from fully developed flow and thermal entrance length which, which I will discuss in the next slide. Uh, then from uh, uh, width and depth, uh, we have, uh, I have calculated the area and perimeter and from this area and perimeter, I have calculated the hydraulic diameter. This hydraulic diameter comes around 0 0.036 meter. Now the test section. So this test section is made up of taxi glass. So uh, author has uh, given a two window for measuring the surface temperature and the width of the 
uh, and the uh, uh, length of the window is 0 0.16 meter 0.6 meter deep so here there is a ss coil having a th thickness of 0 0.05 mm and it is glued with the contact adhesive to the pedigree glass so the total length is 7.2 meter uh, this 7.2 meter includes a 12 pieces of 0 0.6 meter so i will describe in detail next slide So now the question is this fully developed flow region includes the thermal development region in the existing experimental facility or it is different. So here you see this is the uh, test facility diagram of uh, uh, heating coil duct experiment. Here you see this is the heat exchanger. So from heat exchanger the water flows from the pump and passing through the wall then it will go to the honeycomb structure which is a flow straightener then it will go to the test section so after 4 to double zero nm length then it goes to the heating uh, duct uh, which is a SS strip which is uh, so connected with the power supply and that is heated so here it is unheated section and it is heated section and again it is uh, passing and again it is after 12 1 to double zero mm length then it again goes to the heat exchanger so the question is that is that uh, uh, fully developed flow length and thermal development are separated or they are included in each other so if we calculate flow development length then also use the criteria of 100 into depth so then if you multiply the 100 into the hydraulic diameter then it comes around uh, 3.6 meter then uh, thermal development length uh, he used a criteria of 5 to 39 times so i put a maximum of 39 times then it is comes around 1.4 meter so if i sum this uh, what called uh, this uh, flow development length and the thermal development length then it comes around 5 meter but the length is 7.2 meter so if i uh, subtract 7.2 meter from 5 meter then it comes around 2.2 meter so this extra length covers the honeycomb straightener length and also the uncertainty in the fdm and thermal development so this is the flow schematic of the testing so it is clear that after the flow development length there is thermal development length so it is separate so first flow is needs to be fully developed uh, and then it goes in the thermal region where thermal development length is needed for the thermal development length in previous slide we have seen the test section is too long which is 7.2 meter so the question arises if the long length that is 7.2 meter is really required to achieve for a fully developed flow for thermal development length So for that we did a literature survey on flow development length and thermal development length and considered the following table. So first we have chosen the uh, duct of square shape because we want to see the velocity profile the symmetrical from the all sides. So from this we get the hydraulic diameter of 0 0.03 meter. Now for flow development length, we choose two criteria. First is pragmatic and second is conservative. So if we choose pragmatic, then we have chosen 50 times of hydraulic diameter. And if we go for conservative, then it is 80 times of hydraulic diameter. Thermal development length can be achieved with the 10 times of hydraulic diameter. And uh, if we use the measuring windows and outlet uh, of the test section then we have put one meter so if we use the conservative then it is coming around 3.7 and if we if we use the pragmatic then it is coming around 2.8 so first we will start with the pragmatic uh, length uh, and if uh, we will and then we will in investigate the velocity profile with CIV and if we achieve the flow the fully developed flow then we use pragmatic one and if not then we will go to the conservative
होगा डिजाइन ऑफ द टेस्ट सेक्शन तो इन दिस स्लाइड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिजाइन ऑफ द टेस्ट सेक्शन डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड दैट वी हैव अ स्क्वायर डक्ट सो द डायमेंशन इज 30 एमएम सो हियर यू सी इट इज द 50 एमएम सो 10 एमएम इज द थिकनेस सो इफ यू सबट्रैक्ट 10 एमएम एंड 10 एमएम दैट इट इज 30 एमएम सो 30 एमएम ऑफ द विड 30 एमएम ऑफ द लेंथ then uh, we have discussed that the total length is 2.8 meters so here this is in mm so it is 2800 mm then we also discussed that uh, uh, the the length for fully developed flow is about 1.5 meters so we have put 1500 mm for the uh, fully developed flow then uh, we have a 700 mm which is used for uh, supporting uh, Uh, like power connection and measuring window and then 600, 600 mm is the outlet length now if you cut it from the various section then you see that if you cut from this then the section look like this means this is the this four view is the side view and this is the front view and this is the top view so this is mainly meant for the fabrication purpose so for this for to close this uh, what called uh, top of the uh, section which is 700 mm long we have uh, another this is the design of supporting frame so in previous slide we have discussed the 700 mm for closing the 700 mm length we need a supporting frame so this supporting frame is meant for uh, ir window and for power connection So this hash part you see it is required for the uh, power connection and this 100 mm long is required for the uh, measurement of temperature fluctuation from the uh, infrared camera so here you can see it is 700 mm long and uh, like in previous section we have uh, uh, we have front view we have top view and if you cut it from various section then the section side view appears is like this so this is mainly meant for the fabrication purpose now experimental matrix so for experimental matrix first we need to fix the temperature so our ambient temperature is 20 degree centigrade and pressure is corresponding to the flow so we can take the thermal property like density viscosity corresponding to temperature and pressure uh, like for 20 degree centigrade so then we fix the reynolds number so our reynolds number range varies from 5000 to 10000 and prandtl number we can calculate from the uh, thermal properties at a required temperature at a given temperature so it comes around 7 now the flow velocity volumetric flow and mass flow rate can be calculated from the reynolds number so if you know the reynolds number then you can calculate the velocity with your given geometry then it comes uh, uh, from range from 0.167 to, to uh, 0.61 meter per second then your volumetric flow is 9 to 33 meter per minute then your mass flow rate comes to 0.15 to 0.55 kg per second so this is for flow uh, part but uh, for heating part uh, the calculation looks like this so we know that calorimetric power uh, is calorimetric heat is mcp delta t where m is the mass flow rate cp is the specific heat and delta t is the temperature at the inlet and outlet of the stress section so uh, suppose uh, if we have a 20 degree at the inlet and if we have only rise of 0.1 degree that is 20.1 then the power uh, required to achieve 0.1 degree is 0.23 kilowatt so for 0.32 kilowatt what is the uh, current required to generate this power so suppose if if say the resistivity of excess coil is uh, 6.90 into 10 to the power minus 7 ohms meter 
then for uh, resistance then we can calculate the resistance which comes around uh, 0.14 ohms so uh, for producing uh, the uh, 0.23 kilovolt we need 40 ampere of current so for 0.1 degree delta t rise correspond to 48 ampere then if we rise 1 degree centigrade then we need 128 ampere and if we go for 5 degree then it correspond to 287 ampere so for that we have decided that we can go up to 300 ampere maximum so this is our requirement for power consumption on dissolved area so this is a gray area so uh, in this experiment we test the foil having a different material also we will test a foil with different thicknesses so as you know that thicknesses also affect the temperature fluctuation so we will test different thicknesses of the foil also we have a plan for uh, uh, investigating flood uh, investigating temperature fluctuation in developed region and in developing region also so first we start with the developed section and then we reverse the flow so that we can investigate the temperature fluctuation in developing section so it is quite interesting that uh, how the temperature fluctuation is same or different in developing section uh, compared to developed section or not now i uh, now i also uh, uh, invite from the audience if uh, they put invitation of the new idea in this existing idea so thank you very much hope uh, you like my video and uh, please uh, ask any question or any comment if you want to give so thank you very much have a nice day